So it has been a while since I've recorded, obviously, um, as everyone is not seeing any videos from me for a bit. Um, a lot of changes have gone on since Mother's Day when I last did a video. Um, I am still in, well, I'm back on the level of Thyroxin. Feeling a little better there, uh, I think. I mean, it's not bad, actually. Um, other problems have come up that I don't know what it's related to, or how it's related, or why it's related, or whatever. Um, having to do with my uh, sacro sacroiliac joint dysfunction, I went back to the doctor and. Um, I don't know. Um, my pain's been worse. Uh, I can't sit for very long. I can't stand for very long, and I already mentioned that before, but it's, the times have been reduced greatly on uh, my ability to do these things now. <sighs> I went to my, I just, I was dressed up. <laughs> this came from my daughter's graduation ceremony, and I wanted to cry because I was was in so much agony trying to sit still. It's been like, I can sit maybe a half hour if I'm lucky now. Um, I haven't been able to drive much. I can't stand. I don't know. I'm just constantly in pain, even when I wake up now. So all that was done to help me with this is more medicine. Nothing else. Now, you know, ideal situation, which was just mentioned to me would be physical therapy, but I um, fortunately am on, um, well it's Medicaid, but it's not normal Medicaid. I have to pay for a lot of things out of pocket, um, but physical therapy is not covered and uh, I can't afford it. Um, my husband just lost his job. We have to return our car to the dealership. So, she wants me in physical therapy, but there's nothing we can do. So, it's at home therapy. You know, I just do the exercises she gives me and take a buttload of meds. Now, I'm now on a pain med, a nerve blocker, and a muscle relaxer. Plus, I can take thousand plus milligrams of uh, ibuprofen and acetaminophen in a day in between all these three other pills that I can take. So it just almost feels like because of what they are, how strong they are, I can't drive. Um, I can't do much. Uh, pretty much just makes me so drugged out that I can't do anything. Working would be hard. As I wouldn't be able to be on these meds while it is at work, obviously. There's absolutely no way it could happen. And, uh, well, to not be on them and try and work wouldn't work either. I don't know a job that would let me sit and stand whenever I feel like it for as long as I feel like it for whenever I need to and leave if the pain is too bad. I, I don't know a job that will do that. Everyone's still saying try disability, but I really think if I tried to move forward, my doctor would tell them that I don't need it. I would be told by my doctor, I'm sure, or the disability people that uh, I can work, but it's limited. Well, you tell me what company would hire me, knowing the pain I have, knowing my situation, knowing what I have to do to be comfortable and offer me a job with those requirements. It wouldn't happen. You out there in the world know this. It would not happen. You have to be able to work. You have to be able to function. You have to be able to do what they need you to do or else why even try? Um, like I said, I can't sit for long periods of time and I can't stand for long periods of time. I have to be able to walk pace, to keep my hips moving, to keep from being in pain, 
I have to be able to sit when needed, to stand when needed, because my tailbone, my bone spur is acting up. I gotta have freedom to do what I need to do to ensure that I'm not popping pain pills while on a job and then hurting myself or doing something irrational or wrong and causing the company problems because I'm on pain then. You know, society doesn't understand that. They don't. They just think we're all lazy and we don't do anything to improve our situation. <laughs> well, like we fucking can. I mean, we're not millionaires. We're not rich. I come from a poor ass family. And now I'm dirt poor to the point where I have to hope I won't become homeless. Um, I'm frustrated. I'm in college to get a better degree so I can earn money, but unless I uh, create my own business with it, it's going to be pointless. I don't know what to do with it. I mean, it's better than what my options are, but I've got another year before I even graduate. And right now I can do an internship, but I can't live off nothing. I have a family of five. So, and then I'm getting in to be seen for my eye because my vision's messed up. And they think, well, they're pretty sure it's neurological blockage somewhere. Um, it's not debris. It's not something that I can have cleaned out. It's not something that will eventually go away. It's neurological blockage in my eye somewhere. And I don't know what to do with that. The initial visit's going to be covered by my insurance. But I have anything after, I think I have to try and come up with the money. Tired. Tired of being tired. I don't know at this point. I don't want to be doped up. I don't want to be on meds my whole life. I've tried every other route. I'm trying to get my doctor to help me get the surgery that would fix it. Um, I had an acquaintance. I've only met a couple times. She has the same problem I do. She has a sacral joint dysfunction with bone spurs in the same spots I do. She just had surgery to replace it all. Take the bone spurs out, fix her joint dysfunction. No problem. She said, though, it was a year of physical therapy before then, but I can't even do the physical therapy. I've been in pain for two years of this problem. It's been two years. But I'm gonna, I'm just scared because I'm gonna end up like my family members before me. Well, maybe my dad, he had the same problem. Everyone's like, well, if you lose weight, you'll feel better. Okay, but I can't do normal exercises because of the, the dysfunction, the kyphosis, the joint dysfunction, the bone spurs, the busted pelvis. The arthritis. <laughs> I go to a physical therapist and he still, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. Nope. I, uh, I don't want to be 50 years old and needing a wheelchair. I was, that was my dad. He kept gaining weight and gaining weight and I have thyroid disorder, which causes me to gain weight naturally. So, on top of not being mobile, seems my fate is sealed. Despite everything I'm doing to fix it. But when you have nothing and no one to turn to, you have no one that'll help you, you have no one that'll listen, no one that'll offer, no one that'll help with, I can't offer. I can't offer anything to anybody right now, except for my, my will to not not be in pain, my will to do everything I need to do to feel better. Frustrating. Very frustrating. No! But, uh, sorry, I got someone knocking on my door asking me if I wanted some. I don't know what to do. It, when you have all the will and angst and, and, and energy and urge to move forward and be healthy and be thin and be 
I don't need to be 120 pounds. I don't need to even be 150 pounds, but I do need to be thinner. I have the urge, but when I go out and do everything I need to do on my own to get it done, it hurts me physically, it hurts me mentally, it hurts me everywhere, and then I'm down for days. If I had the surgery to fix these problems, cure it to a degree, I shouldn't say cure, that's a bad word, isn't it? To fix it to a degree where I won't need to be on all these meds. You won't have to keep having to fill me out prescriptions. I won't have to need five different pain meds just to get up and function during the day. I mean, that's ridiculous. My dad's on like 17, I swear, in one day just to make it two hours. And then after two hours, he's down again. I don't want to be that way. So I'm trying to avoid stretching this out. And it, it's not happening. Nobody's working with me. Nobody wants to help me. Nobody wants to do it. If you're too young, you don't need it yet. Save it for when you're older. No. Make the problem worse by extending it out until I'm 50, and then you have no choice. And then by then, whatever, you know, you're old. You might as well sit in the wheelchair and select disability. But society is just so messed up. <laughs> doctors are messed up. The world is messed up on how people that are truly fighting for their lives out there can't because no one wants to help them because that's less money out of their pocket. Those prescriptions they can just keep prescribing over and over and over for all the visits. They keep coming in saying, I'm hurting, I'm hurting, please help me. That's money they lose if they go and fix it. God. That's horrible, you know, because they're just so broke. They never make much money, do they? No, they don't make much. No. Wonder how they'd survive on 725, supporting a family five, family of five, making 10 hours a week. I did it for two years. That's half the reason why I'm in the condition I'm in, because it was physical labor, manual physical labor for just 10 hours a week, mind you, wasn't a lot of hours, I shouldn't complain, right? That's not the point. It was hard work for shit pay and shit hours with no benefits, no raise for two years. So until they've lived my life, they cannot sit there and compare to their measly whatever it is they're getting, which would I would be I wouldn't even know what to do with that kind of money. I ask if somebody offers me 12 an hour, I would not even know what to do with that kind of money. Well, I shouldn't say that because my husband was earning 11 an hour and we were still broke. Our bills were paid though, trust me. Everything was paid, it just, we had no extra money. I mean, we'd still have to donate plasma just to get things, little things that we needed like toilet paper and laundry soap and gas for the car. And but at least the main bills were paid, but that was it. That's all that 11 hour uh, did for us. 40 to 50 hours a week. It's full time. With assistance from the state. I mean, we still couldn't make it. People were like, oh, well, you're messing with your money wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're mitching off the system or something. You have no idea. <laughs> and if you claim you do, well, you're doing something differently than we are and good for you. You're doing it right, obviously. Now that we're doing it wrong, you know, we don't go to restaurants, we don't go to movie theaters, we don't do family vacations, we don't go to water parks, we don't even go to the zoo, we don't eat out ever, I mentioned that, we don't, you know, go to restaurants, whatever, fast food, nope, doesn't happen, we don't go to gas stations except for our gas, um, let's see, we sit home 24-7, and we do nothing. I cook all the meals here for everything. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If we want entertainment, we watch Netflix. That's our splurge. Nine dollars a month for Netflix. So sue us. We're spoiled. See, it's just people, you don't have the right judgment mentally. You don't have the right thoughts of what really is out there. Because 
all you can see was what's on the surface. Well, they're getting all this stuff, they're getting all this assistance, they're getting all this help, and blah, blah, blah. No, actually, we're not getting any help. We don't ask for it. I don't tell people this. This is the first. This live video is the first ever true record of what really goes on in my life. Nobody has a clue. Nobody has a clue what we struggle with. Nobody has a clue what I'm going through medically and physically and mentally and emotionally. Nobody has a clue how hard we try and how much we even mess up. Nobody has a clue. So, I don't go out and preach my problems to the world. This is the first. And it, this isn't preaching my problems to the world. This is showing you what it's like to be 35 facing disability but not able to get up, heading towards immobility to the point where you're afraid you're going to be in a wheelchair, frustrated and annoyed that your third and youngest child will not get the parenting that the first older two did because you're falling apart physically you can't keep up. So yeah, um, this is just showing people, I can't just sit here and be handed a bunch of pills and it'll all get better. It'll all be fine. Here, take a bunch of drugs. Just be drugged. You're drugged. You're not complaining because you're not feeling nothing. Tough part about it is half those pills don't work unless I double or triple them up. I mean, I don't want to do that. That scares me. How do I know I'm not going to die? I'm going to take one before bed and end up not waking up because the pill did something weird to me. That's the last thing I have anybody in my house needs. But. Alright. So, yeah. Once I get my vision test, I don't know when that's going to happen. They were supposed to call me and I doubt they're going to call me. And find out what's going on, but. I think I'm okay with the thyroid. Everything felt a lot better and a lot more clear. Well, thinking wise, I'm a lot more clear, I guess, but it's a little harder on some other areas. And they're minor, so I'm not worried. It's just mainly my joint dysfunction and my eye that's bugging me right now. So. Drain dysfunction, I get tons of pills, so we'll see what happens with my eye. I'll probably look at it and say, yeah, there's probably something wrong, but uh, you have state med tape, so you don't get our help. So my advice to you, if you don't need it, don't get on it, because they don't care about you when you're on it. Then goes with, and I don't care if anyone gets upset, veteran benefits, because my husband's a veteran, and he went into the VA hospital for the first time ever with an injury. And first time ever, ever that he's ever gone. He was brand new. He had to do all the paperwork and everything just to get it done. And they said, um, just go home and take ibuprofen. And what it was this infection and swelling in his rib cage. He had pulled all the muscles and, and did some bruising or something when he had done some hard work. He said, go home and take some aspirin. They treated him like a drug user and he had never been in there in his life. They're like, you don't get anything. He's like, please, seriously, you can't give me an anti-inflammatory pill or a, a, an antibiotic or something? They're like, no, aspirin's all you get. Sorry, go home and take some aspirin. And it, six months later, he was still in pain. So, yeah, don't get on state aid if you don't need it. Don't deal with VA if you don't need it. I don't know what to say, that's first time. But, uh, anyways, I guess I'm done ranting. There'll be another video eventually, I'm sure. I just don't know when, and I'm trying to do it more, but it's been harder. It's my house is a mess. Give me a minute. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, so sorry about that. <laughs>
stressful here. Everyone's upset and stressed, but my kids are doing good, though, in the sense of they graduated school, they're doing good. All I can do is focus on them, so every day all I do is focus on my kids. And